A little over a month ago, the 2017 State of JavaScript report was released. I discovered this report last year when it first launched. This year, the number of participants doubled, and I'm going to spend a few minutes discussing what I think are some of the interesting findings. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. So the first thing I want to mention about the state of JavaScript report is to sign up so you'll be a part of the next report. Down towards the bottom of the first page is where you can enter your email to be notified. The more JavaScript developers that participate, the more accurate this report is going to be. Also down here at the bottom, these are the three people we need to thank for the work which they put together for this report and which they plan to continue to do for reports in the future. Okay, let's jump in and see some of the results. Now first I want to take a look at connections. Now connections has a very interesting chart which they've included in this report. The best way to understand how this chart works is if we select one category. So we have a number of categories here at the top, JavaScript flavors, front-end frameworks, as an example. If I deselect front-end frameworks, then all I'm seeing is the JavaScript flavors, plain, TypeScript, ES6, Elm, and so on. Now, if I include front-end frameworks, then we can see the intersection between some of these things. For example, those that use React, how many of them are using ES6? Quite a number, as you can see. How many are using TypeScript? And we can see that number as well. So it's an interesting chart to see how certain things are interconnected in the JavaScript world, in the JavaScript development that we that we use. You can use a total of three of these at a time. So if I click on Build Tools and I take a look at Gulp, I can then see where the connections are. Um, and it's interesting that with something like Build Tools, there's connections to the other Build Tools. So developers are using more than one Build Tool. So an interesting chart to take a look at in connections. Now let's jump to flavors and take a look at the results here. Now a couple of things that I noticed from the previous state of JavaScript report and this one is the adoption of TypeScript and ES6. So both went up quite a bit from last year and so TypeScript is becoming much more popular and ES6 is being adopted by more and more developers. Now as we scroll down the next chart that it shows is the number of libraries used. And this might be of interest. There are still several developers, 800, 819 is what it shows here, that are using no libraries but the largest number of developers are using two libraries. So this report has a, over 20,000 respondents and so two libraries, 10,859. That's how many developers are using two libraries. Now within these categories, it breaks things out by developers and there's some interesting information which you can find in all of these categories under developers. The first developer subcategory has to do with salary ranges. And so I was looking at this and I noticed over here at the end there's seems to be quite a discrepancy about what developers are making. These red colors are higher salary ranges and there's a large percentage of them that seem to be making quite a bit more that use Reason. Now, I have not really delved into Reason. I don't know much about Reason at this point. And so it got me interested in it and I went out and looked at it. But something else that should be considered with this 
is how many actually use reason. So if I jump back here to the results, here's reason right here. Now these colors, the purple color are, I've used it before and would use it again. Okay, that dark purple, the light color, I've used it before and would not use it again. Well, down here, I've used it before and would use it again, 131. So there's not a whole lot of people using it at this point. But just looking at that information on developers caused me to think, oh, well, I probably need to look into that and see what that's all about. You can also compare in the developer's subtopic years of experience. And that seems to be pretty uniform, not a lot of changes between those that use ES5, ES6, TypeScript, and so on. One last subcategory under flavors that might be of interest is worldwide usage. And so you can look into your own country and see how things lay out. And the, in, the thing I find most interesting is that a lot of these look very similar. And so there's a lot, as far as what's being used, there seems to be a lot of similarities across countries. All right, let's jump to front end development. And a couple things I noticed compared to last year's report. React has continued to grow. Here's React over here, and we can see the dark purple, the number that would use it in and would use it again. The yellow are those that have heard about it and would like to learn more. So React has continued to grow from last year, and so has Vue. Angular 2 has continued to grow as well. I'm a bit surprised at how many are still using Angular 1. Now, if I jump into other answers inside a front end, this gives me a list of tools that are mentioned most in the other answers. I found that interesting to look at as well. And you can jump in to the developer's subtopic in front end development as well. And you can check out salary ranges. I've been examining this to see if there's any indication that certain front end frameworks are either used by those that make a better salary or maybe lead to making better salary. I don't know. I can't, I'm not certain what judgments to make but I do find the information interesting. And you can also compare the years of experience as well for front-end development. All right, really quick jumping into back-end development. I'm not going to go through all these categories. I'm going to go through the ones that I find most interesting. And then you can come and explore these on your own. But one thing that is pretty obvious in the back-end development category is that Express is the monolith. It's the one that most are using right now based upon these answers provided. Now another category I found interesting is with the build tools. I always like to look at build tools and NPM seems to be the most used right now. And if I look at other answers, I found it interesting that yarn was mentioned quite a bit. So an up and comer. Now, when I look at the developer section within build tools, basically what it shows me is that the build tool that is used is pretty much just a preference of the developer. It, I don't know that I see any trends that certain developers at certain levels use certain build tools or anything like that, even based on experience or based on salary range. So it seems to communicate to me that it's really a preference. What someone likes to use or maybe what they were initially introduced to. But we also noticed one of the other categories that developers tend to use more than one build tool, which I found interesting. That That's my case as well. I have used more than one build tool in the past. 
All right, one more category that I found interesting, and I'm going to jump to mobile, and then I'm going to jump to developers. And I was looking at the salary range for mobile, and I expected those that were doing mobile development to be making quite a bit more. But I was comparing this to front end development with the salary range. And I don't see that mobile developers are making that much more. In fact, I would come to the conclusion that front end development, the salary range for that seems to be better. Now, obviously, we'd need to dive into the data a bit more to be able to make that sort of conclusion. But I did find it an interesting observation. So come out and spend some time with the state of JavaScript report. I think there are some interesting things to learn from it. I think it's important for our field, for JavaScript developers, to be aware of what's going on. And if nothing else, go out and sign up so you can participate in the next report that will be happening towards the end of this year. I hope you found this helpful and look forward to any comments, maybe some ways you are deciphering the data. Hit the bell to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and to support this channel. Thanks for watching.